Now we're given the probability distribution of our random variable x and also given that e of x equals four and a half. So how do we form two equations with p and q in? Well the first one is that you should know that the sum of all these probabilities comes to one. So we can just say that if we add these up we've got 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.15 that comes to 0.55 so therefore we've got 0.55 plus the P and the Q that's going to come to 1 and if we take 0.55 from both sides we've got P plus Q equals 1 minus 0.55 and that leaves us with 0.45 now as for the other equation, we'll just number this one number one though for the moment. As for the other equation, what we do is we rely on this fact that e of x equals 4.5. How do you work out e of x normally when you've got a table like this? Well you should remember that e of x, often called the mean by the way, so uh, if a question asks you to find the mean from a probability distribution table, then what they mean is e of x. Okay, How you do it is that you sum all the observed values multiplied by their corresponding probabilities. In other words, you do x times the probability that x equals the observed value x. You sum them all together and that is your mean. So hopefully you remember that and that is what we use to get the other equation. So if we do that we can just say also e of x is 4.5, e of x will be 1 multiplied by 0.2 I'll put the 1 in, 1 times 0.2 even though it's 0.2 then we've got plus the observed value here 3 times p, 3p and if we continue this on we're going to have 5 times 0.2 plus 7 times q, that's 7q, plus 9 times 0.15 and that is going to equal e of x which is 4.5. So if you work out all of this side here, 1 times 0.2 and 5 times 0.2 and 9 times 0.15, what you should find is that you get 2.55 and then you've got plus the 3p here and the 7q here and that comes to the 4.5 over there. So what you've got to do now is subtract 2.55 from both sides and that will leave you with 3p plus 7q equals 4.5, take away 2.55 and that's 1.95 and I'll number that equation too and so we have two equations in terms of P and Q. Obviously you don't have to end up with these equations as long as you've got equivalent equations to these two. All right. So uh, that brings us now to the end of the first part of this question.